Another principle that you can use, and this is more of a pose thing. I'm just trying to cover like the real basic ones that you kind of want to apply to um, your next uh, project here or, or lab is squash and stretch. Okay. So the idea here is that when you have uh, the various masses inside of your character, your object, whatever you're animating should squash. So, you know, uh, be pushed down and, and uh, uh, become wider uh, horizontally and shorter vert vertically uh, and stretch, uh, which would be the opposite, you know, taller and thinner. Um, most objects are going to have that. So even if you have someone walking when they're just going around, you will see their torso, uh, particularly where the stomach is, will kind of squash and stretch a little bit. All right. Um, even things that you wouldn't think have squash and stretch. So, for example, if you were to watch this video, here's a golf ball, right? This is ultra slow-mo. Now you never actually see it, but look at that. That is, you know, you think of that as a very hard object. They're actually very squishy. They're specifically made to be squishy. So when you, um, no matter what you're doing, you almost always want to put squash and stretch to some degree. Now, some things are going to have a whole ton of squash and stretch. If I were to drop a water balloon, I would expect it to squash and stretch in a real elastic way and you would see it and it would wobble and stuff um but let's say you dropped a bowling ball now you might be like oh well that wouldn't squash and stretch it does squash and stretch it doesn't do a lot but it does a little bit so i'd have like one or two frames uh that would squash it and one or two that would stretch it slightly and it'd be really quick it'd be one of those things that the best way i like to describe the squash and stretch is most of the time it's something that the audience doesn't see but they can feel if it's not there it will look wooden and stiff but it's not something they should notice it's a lot like sound effects if you don't have was it foley is that what's called like if you don't have the audio let's say a character's walking across screen and you don't put the audio of like steps of them walking it will feel weird like the audience will be like this doesn't seem right but if you put the footsteps in there the audience won't notice it but they would notice it if it wasn't right if they do notice the footstep sounds, it means you did a bad job. It means it's way too strong and it's not working. So that's generally the way you should try, try and treat squash and strike. Sometimes it's a feature. Sometimes you want to go really nuts with it and really, you know, like the water balloon example. And like, or if you're doing something super cartoony. Um, but even if you're trying to do something that's even realistic, you typically want to add at least a little squash and stretch uh, to your objects.